I think all of us know him and cherish him so dearly, but for those of you who may not, we've got Mr. Bill Tinley coming this morning to share the word of God with us. And Bill, I ask you to come down. Lay it on us, brother. Amen, brother. <laughs> hey, it works. <clears throat> is that loud or what? <laughs> it is loud. We're glad that you made it. Uh, it looks like the word got out and uh, we got a lot of empty seats today. I, I'm, 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 for those of you who are visiting, uh, this doesn't happen very often and uh, I don't know, you might be thankful for that. Uh, our topic today is going to be, can you play the guitar? And several weeks ago, we had, uh, we had a, a, a young lady and a young man come uh, on Sunday evening to entertain us. And, and the young lady could sing great. But that boy with that guitar, he could flat lay it on. And uh, when I saw him do that, it just brought back memories of many moons ago when I aspired to be a guitar player. And... Uh, I never did develop like he did. I could do a little Chet Atkins. I could take the guitar out and hold it. But, uh, but it reminded me of a devotional I, I did about 20-something years ago one Sunday evening. And if any of y'all remember any of this stuff, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody how it's going to end. Uh, but I've added a little bit to it. Uh, how many of you can play the guitar? How many of you would like to be able to play a guitar? All right, well, when you leave today, you'll be no more prepared than you were when you got here. <laughs> but, but when you see a guitar and a guitar player, something will come to your mind. Uh, good Lord willing, something will come to your mind that we talked about today. Now, I've got to do a little bit of preparation, so y'all just hang there just a minute. <clears throat> One thing that used to fascinate me with uh, guitar players when they would come is they always had to have a... a well, not always had to have a, a stand, but they usually had to have a microphone sitting in front of them. And uh, a lot of the time, they would spend time sitting there adjusting the microphone up, up and down and up and down and it was a distraction to me and so sometimes I couldn't couldn't get to appreciate their guitar playing because of their fiddling with the stuff that they had and uh, you won't see me doing that today I, I won't do that because that's distracting and uh so what we're going to start off with is, hit it. When, uh, when I decided I wanted to be a guitar player, uh, I, I wondered, you know, what are the basics that you got to have to be a guitar player? To be a good one, or to just be a guitar player? Well, first of all, you got to have desire. So I had the desire. So my first National Guard check of $32, <laughs> I went to the pawn shop in Augusta and bought a $28 guitar. Now, you read the instruction books and they tell you that the more you spend, the probably the better off you are. So a $28 guitar is probably not where you want to start, but it was the best I could do at the time. And I wasn't sure about the investment to start off with, so I didn't want to get too deep into it. Uh, I bought the guitar. Well, you got this. It doesn't come with the instructions, so you have to buy an instruction book. So I, it just so happened at the pawn shop, they had an instruction book. It was called Learn to Play the Guitar in Seven Days or Your Money Back. And it was by a guy named Ed Sales, which was an interesting name for, for that book. Uh, now, in the process of reading the instructions in that book, 
and, and, and beginning to try to play, I came to the conclusion that there are four basic steps on being a guitar picker or a guitar player. One of them is you've got to have that desire. You've got to, to, to desire to be a guitar player. And uh, so when, when you leave today, you will get some insight into my experience on learning to play the guitar. And, and hopefully you can apply it to your, your life and, and your aspirations to play the guitar or do other things. All right, uh, so first of all, you've got to have a desire. It's kind of like, it reminds me, when I was doing this, it reminded me of when I started wearing contact lens many moons ago. I went to the, the doctor, I said, I want to get the contact lens. He said, there's three things you need. He said, one of them is you've got to have the right kind of eyeball. It's got to be the right shape. You've got to have the desire to, to wear the contacts because it takes a little while to get used to them. And three, you need $150. And I had all three. I barely had number three, but I had all, all three of them. So, so that's the way it is with, with playing the guitar. You've got to have that desire to, be, to want to play. And of course, I, when you've got the desire, you've got the desire to invest. You've got to invest money, 28 bucks. You've got to invest time. I think the, 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 the instruction book costs about half what the, book, what the guitar costs. But that's the side point. So you've got, to, you've got to have the desire, and you've got to be able to figure out how to sit on the stool so you can, uh, there you go. You've uh, got to have the desire, and you've got to have the want to. But the next thing you've got to have is, you've got to have knowledge. So it's one thing to have the guitar and to be able to make, can y'all hear that? Doesn't that sound good? I didn't think so. You know why it didn't sound good? I didn't have my plectrum. Did you know that a guitar pick was a plectrum? I didn't know that either. When I saw plectrum, I said, that sounds serious. But you don't have to have a plectrum. You can do it with your old finger. Y'all hear that? Okay, uh, moving along. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, you got to have knowledge uh, of the guitar, and uh, I thought this was pretty interesting. It's kind of like a, kind of like a person. You got a head, you got a neck, and you got a body. Some of our bodies kind of look like that, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you got the head, and you got the neck, and you got the body, and then along the neck, you got things called frets. That sounds serious too. And then you have this fingerboard. And the fingerboard is between the frets. And to get to different notes, you go from one fingerboard to the other. That's how you get to the notes. Now, it's got six strings. Now, some exotic people like to get eight and ten strings and stuff like that, but six strings is what I wanted. I didn't want to be that great, you know. I didn't have a problem though. <clears throat> and uh, the thinnest string is called the first string. And the thickest string, I might can get it out. Can y'all hear that? Oh well, it doesn't make a difference. Uh, <clears throat> that's the sixth string. And uh, these strings are different notes. And, and, and the notes are E, B, G, D, A, E. And uh, the book said the easy way to remember that is the Easter Bunny gets drunk at Easter. <laughs> That's about the only thing that I really remember about. <laughs> but, uh, wait a minute, where was that? <clears throat> okay, the... the the next thing is, uh, well, you've got to be in tune. So how do you tune this thing? Well, you can have a pitch pipe, which I don't have a pitch pipe. You can have a, a, a piano, or you can do what they call relative tuning. That means holding, holding one string in 
and do it, do it like that. Y'all hear that? They're supposed to be in tune. I don't know where they are. Not. Uh, <clears throat> but, but you've got to be in tune in order to produce the music. Now, if, you don't, if you're not in tune, you can pick it right, but it won't sound right because you're not in tune. We'll talk about that. And then you can do the notes, which is one like that, or you can do a chord, which is several strings at one time. Give my plectrum out. It probably won't sound any better, but I'll try it. Well, it's supposed to sound like that <clears throat> anyway. And then uh, you got to learn the rhythm, how to, you know, do that. And, and I used to watch, I used to watch those guys on uh, back in black and white TV times and all those country uh, groups. They just played one or two chords and they'd just do this all the time. And they, I don't care whether they were singing Amazing Grace or, or, or Great Balls of Fire. It was the same. Blah, 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 blah. But, uh, <clears throat> but that's what you got to have. You got to have that rhythm. And, and, and to get that, you strum it at different tempos. Okay. The next thing you need is practice. Practice. You got to learn how to put your hands in the right positions. Uh, you got to learn the chords. You have to uh, learn the notes. And then you need to learn the music. And then you need to memorize the music so you don't need the written music all the time. And that young fellow, when he played the other night, he didn't have anything written anywhere. And he played all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, he played two or three things at one time. And, and, and Jerry and I thought he might have had 15 fingers instead of just five on that, the way he was doing it. <clears throat> and the thing about that is, you got to make a commitment in this practicing business because the first commitment is when you put your fingers on these metal, thin metal strings, it hurts. And the second day, it hurts worse. And the third day, it's even more sore. And so the commitment is, you've got to make a commitment to do it long enough till you get your fingers tough enough that you can make that note that you need to make without it being so sore. So when you get this desire and this knowledge and this practice all together, the ultimate goal is to what? Make music. And so you put it all together to make music. You got desire, you got knowledge, you got practice, and you got skill. And it all comes together to make music. Now you can make music alone, you can sit at home, sit out on the back steps, and sing some of them sad songs about being lonely out there, and, and never mind. But uh, <coughs> you, can, uh, you can make music by yourself, or you can make music with other folks. So why am I talking about this guitar business here at Rosemont this morning? Because being a Christian is a lot like being a guitar picker. And we'll talk about that. You stay right there. <clears throat> So how is being a, a Christian uh, a lot like playing the guitar? You hear God's word or you see the changes that are being made in a Christian's life. You see uh, what other people have been doing and what ha uh, the Lord has done in somebody else's life. And you, and you develop that des desire in a minute. There you go. You, you develop that desire to have what, what they have. Desire to grow closer to the Lord. You have that desire to, to know who this, who this God is or who this Jesus is that gives these people this inner peace that they have. You develop that desire and you desire to learn more about who this Savior is. And, and you desire about who this Savior is that can forgive your sins. And then you desire to become a follower of Christ. In the scriptures, uh, 
<clears throat> it talks about desire of Psalm 42, 1 and 2. It says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. David is saying, Lord, I desire to be closer to you. I desire to, to know you better. And then in Psalm 62, he says, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock in my salvation. That desire to have that rock in that salvation. Psalm 63, O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. You see that desire? My soul thirsts for you. Earnestly I seek you. If you're going to be a Christian, you need to earnestly seek God's Word, seeks God's will. And then Matthew 5 and 6, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who desire for righteousness. And then Paul said, Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and striving toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I desire to be there with Jesus. And then after you accept Christ as your Savior, and with this desire, then you need knowledge. You need to grow in your knowledge of who Jesus Christ is as you become a Christian. You need to study His Word. And you need to study it in order to learn the instructions that He has on how to be obedient. Uh, obedient to His commands and, and how to relate to Him and how to relate to your neighbors. The Bible is the instruction book. And it ain't like you learned it in seven days or your money back. It's like for eternity. It's got a, it's got a lifetime and an after-lifetime guarantee. So the Bible is the instruction book. You need to look at the instructions on how, how to be a Christian. And then the next thing is knowledge. Knowledge. Okay, uh, and so you, you, you've got the desire and you've got the instruction and you need this knowledge now. So whether this, what's, what about this knowledge? Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but, few, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. And in Proverbs 2, 3 and 5, it said, And if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. And in Proverbs 8, 10 and 11, it says, Choose my instruction instead of silver, knowledge rather than gold, for wisdom is more precious than rubies. So once we gain this knowledge of who Jesus is, we need to put that knowledge to use. We need to practice what we've learned. And we need to let His Word be our instructions for our life. See, it takes practice to not only know Jesus intellectually, but to know Him spiritually. It's one thing to have the knowledge to know that Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ, but is He your Savior? You need to know him personally. And, and like in guitar practice, the beginning <clears throat> when your fingers get sore, as you study God's word, you realize that the Christian life may not be easy all the time. That you may have to kind of work at it. That there will be some things that will come in your way that may not be all that pleasant. And then once you've done that, then you have to continue to practice. And it says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So once you get this knowledge of 
God's word, you need to put it in your heart and put it in your walk and put it in your talk. Proverbs 14, 23 says, All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. So it's one thing to talk it, but it's another thing to walk it. And that's what he wants you to do. And, and here's an interesting scripture that I've always, that's always uh, stood out to me. And it's Acts 17, 11. And it's, it says this, Now the Bereans were of a noble character, of a more no, noble character than the Thessalonians. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined all the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Their Bible teacher was Paul. But they felt the need to go back and check behind Paul to make sure Paul was giving them the gospel. If Paul needs checking up behind, do you know of anybody else that might need to be checked up behind? <laughs> These folks wanted to know for sure what God's Word said and what it meant for them to do and how they needed to act. They didn't depend on somebody else reading the Word and telling them what it was. They studied it. They looked at it. Not pointing any fingers at anybody, but sometimes we uh, listen to other folks, don't we? And we don't take time to see what they're saying is, is, is what's in the Bible. We need to be careful about that, especially today, because it's so easy to see stuff. You Google something, and it tells you what Google says it is, but it may not be the gospel. It may just be Google, or it may be gobbledygook, or whatever they call it. The other part of, of, of this practice thing is commitment. Now, I learned you couldn't practice the guitar every other day or every other week, especially if you're getting started, because that second day, my fingers were sore. And by that fourth day, they were really sore. And I think only one time I was able to get it together long enough that it wasn't quite as, as, as tedious <laughs> to practice. But we have to make a commitment. If you're going to learn to play the guitar. That young fellow that did that thing up here the other night, he made a commitment uh, when he was little. And not only that, he made a commitment to go to, to what did he say, some kind of Chet Atkins school or whatever. He would go somewhere every summer and learn more about it. So he made the commitment, and we as Christians need to make a commitment to be the Christian that God wants us to be. Oh, we got plenty of time. I was, I was thinking we'd run out. Now, the other part is making music. Uh, making music is, is putting this desire and this knowledge and all this practice together and then using it to witness and to serve other people. You can make music alone. You can do a solo act. But you won't be blessed nearly as much if you're not with other folks, I don't think. You make that music alone as you go about your day-to-day -day activities. You're, you're making music with your witness every day as you go about dealing with people. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act, the way you react. You can make music with others by joining fellowship of believers in a church, by being in a worship service, by studying your Bible, by doing daily Bible reading, by going on mission trips, by giving, by tithing, by being a part of the activities that are going on. And, and just as that symphony orchestra, they may have a guitar player in the symphony orchestra, but they got a lot of other, other musical instruments there. 
and, and all these different museums from one end of the stage to the other have got all different talents and abilities and, and instruments. But when you bring them all together and the guy taps the baton and he starts, what does it sound? You have a symphony. You have a symphony. Beautiful music being played and the message getting across. So, just as that symphony is made up of, of all different instruments and talents and abilities, our church is made up of all different talents and abilities. And, and yeah, we can do solo stuff, but when we get these different solo folks together and put them together, we can make a symphony. A symphony in this community, a symphony in this, in this building. We can make an impact. Making music, Romans 12, 4 through 6 says, Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many from form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. And some of us can play the guitar. Some of y'all can play the guitar. Uh, Ephesians 4, there is one body and one spirit. Ephesians 4, 16, from him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love and each does its part. 1 Peter 4, 10, it says each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully and ministering God's grace in various forms. And in verse, uh, Romans 15, 5 and 6, it said, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians 1, 10, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no division among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. Put that symphony together. So can you play the guitar? Do you know any more about playing the guitar today than you did when you walked in here? Doubt it. Maybe not. But hopefully in the future when you see somebody picking a guitar you'll say, hey, that's what Christianity is like. It may be a silly illustration. And I may be a silly illustrator. But I hope that that will come to your mind. Next time you see that young man up here just picking and grinning. You say, that's Christian life. That's the way the Christian life is supposed to be. You see, God gives us all different talents and abilities. And I can't sing. And I can't pick. But I can grin. And I can appreciate those that do. I appreciate those that have the talent and those two young ladies that sang earlier uh, in the choir. Y'all did a great job and I appreciate the, the, the ability and, and see you practice and you have a commitment and you have a desire and you put it all together and you make music and I thank you for that. So we as Christians, we need to use the talents and abilities we have as we go uh, our separate ways. And we can be a part of helping make music in this world today that needs some music today. And I'm not talking about rap and I'm not talking about foolishness. I'm talking about that harmonious music that, that uh, God wants us to have. So it's one thing to have the desire. It's another thing to have knowledge. But without practice, you can't produce the music. And if you, if you can't produce the music, then you can't produce that witness that you should be. And uh, one other note. <clears throat> I retired after 28 years in the National Garden. That was a few years ago. I bought that book to learn to play the guitar in seven days. I've had that book over 28 years. That book's in a cabinet. This guitar has traveled several places. It's been in my office. It's been in the attic. 
it's come down. My oldest son saw it one weekend. He was home from Georgia Tech. He said, Dad, can I take that back to school with me? I said, well, you need to take care of it, you know. It's valuable. He said, I'll tell you. <laughs> when he came home about three weeks later, you know what he was doing? He was picking and grinning because he made a commitment to do something with it. You know, we have a desire to, to do what God wants us to do. And we know what the instructions are, and, and we know have the knowledge. But you know, if you just leave the instruction book over there, and if you don't practice, you're not making music. And, and I hope in some way, with all this foolishness, that, that we've got that across. And just like that Ed Sale book that I got, it didn't make me a guitar picker any more that day than it does today. I can make a noise, but I can't make a joyful noise. I can make people laugh, but it, it's not a joyful noise. It's because they're uh, laughing at somebody who don't know what they're doing. But I hope in some way uh, this foolishness will give you a ch chance to think about the Christian life. We need to make music. We need to have that desire. We need to get the instructions. We need to follow those instructions. But we need to practice what's in that book because... We need to be making the music that this world needs because there's a lot of disharmony in this world today. If you're somebody that has the instruction book but hadn't looked at it in a while, if you're somebody that knows what to do but hadn't practiced in a while, set, a, set aside a routine to get back in practice so we can make music. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, if there's anybody here <clears throat> this morning that feels the need that they need to refire that desire, that they need to work on the knowledge, that they need to put into practice what, what they know they need to put into practice. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with them, help them make the decision that they need to make, Lord, and, and be with them in their lives and give them the the opportunity and give them the, the, encourage, the encouragement to do that so that we can make music for you, not only here at Rosemont, but throughout Waynesboro, Burke County, and maybe throughout this world. Lord, I thank you for your willingness to allow me to, to, to be a part of this. I just pray that your message has gotten across. In Christ's name, amen. <clears throat>